Last week, we dealt with normal motion rendering for still photography. We talked about creating that motion blur for um, moving objects, how the language was, the blur was always behind the objects. And we did a little bit of freezing of normal motion. But this week, we want to do something a little differently. We know the fundamentals. We've dealt with that already. But what happens if we carry things a little further than that? If we wanted to maintain some sense of reality, we couldn't get too extreme because if we used too long a shutter speed, remember, we got a blur that just blurred everything. You couldn't tell what the item was. And for most normal images, that just wasn't acceptable. However, sometimes... If we can adopt an extremely long or an extremely short shutter speed and we have the right subject, we can produce photographs that produce a view of reality or a take on reality that we humans can't normally perceive. And that can be pretty exciting. Now, the historical precedent for this was in the old days, the landscape photographers would go out and they'd get all these flowing rivers, what's frequently called a cotton candy water flow. But they didn't have any option. The emulsions on their film was so slow that it would take multi-minutes of exposure, even in broad daylight, to get a shot. We have an option. But they didn't. But we can learn from what they did. So let's start first with the issue of slow shutter speeds. They allow motion blur to extend farther than normal. In some of the things we looked at, that was a problem. The blur just erased all identity of what things were. But what it also does is it can allow various moving elements to blend into one another. That can create a look that's very different than what the reality of what we're seeing is. So this can be a really interesting technique if the subject is right. Well, here's an example using tidal movement around the Ocean Beach Pier. Here's, here's a normal shot at a 200th of a second. You can see the water spray down in the lower left. It looks like the droplets are frozen in the air, but if we zoomed in on it, you'd realize, no, actually it's not the water droplets are actually blurred a little bit. But suppose we really slowed things down. Here's a 10-second exposure from the same area. Look at what's happened to all of that movement. You're starting to see the general pattern of it, but it's taken on a whole new reality. And what if we change that to 20 seconds? Now things are totally different. This is a very different look than what we normally see. And suppose we made that exposure a minute or 10 minutes or an hour. Can you imagine what you could get with that kind of look? It could be very cool. And in fact, there are photographers who specialize in that kind of photography, doing very long shutter speed photography. If you want to shoot that way, there are some things you must do in order to pull that off. Number one, you need to shoot in very low light, like evening light, because otherwise daylight's just too bright. You can't get the long shutter speeds. Or you can use a very dark neutral density filter, or what's called a fader filter. And with these, you can get 9 to 10 stops of additional shutter time out of it. But suppose we want to use very fast shutter speeds. Suppose we want to go the other way. Well... No, for Pete's sake. Suppose we want to use a fast shutter speed. You've already used faster shutter speeds to freeze some motion. But normal motion, you can stop typical motion with a 500th of a second or even slower. Here's sometimes with the right ex subject, an extremely fast shutter can produce a startling image that's different from the reality 
with the right subject. Extremely fast shutters can really produce a startling image that's as different from reality as what we saw with the very slow shutter speeds. Let's get back to the pier, and we'll check out some examples of how that might work. Here's a normal shot of the pier at a 500th of a second. It looks like we've captured the spray, but if we zoom in on it, into the area that's outlined with the little red box, we realize if you look very close, those water droplets are blurred. Many tiny droplets actually are blurred into a single big droplet because the shutter speed just isn't fast enough for the action that's happening. But suppose we speed it up. Suppose we go to a thousandth of a second. If we zoom into the same area, we realize things are looking a little bit different. We can start seeing some of that individual droplet starting to work. But let's build it up a little faster, because here the water still pretty much looks like water. Let's go to a two thousandth of a second. And here's the close-up of that two thousandth of a second shot. Now we're starting to see fine droplets that we couldn't see before. And if we look over at the foam, the water is starting to take on a different consistency. It almost looks thicker. It almost starts to look like it's fiberglass or something. So let's speed it up even more to four thousandths of a second. Zoom in on it. Now it really is taking on a very different look. This is... This isn't water. This is some kind of semi-clear but fairly thick liquid that's out there. Looks very different. And if we boost it to eight thousandths of a second, now we've got tiny little droplets that we could never see before. The water has been, become frozen into fiberglass. Let's take another look, another eight thousandth of a second shot in the same area. You can see tiny little droplets that you could never see before. And the water really has taken on a very different look. So, you need to do some experimenting on your own in order to play with these. I'm really suggesting, recommending highly, that even for these fast shutter speed shots that you shoot from a tripod, it's going to allow you to compare the different images you've taken in order to pick the best ones. Shooting from a tripod is always a good idea. Study the event. If it's a shot you think fast shutter speeds are perfect for, try to anticipate the peak moment of action because things slow down as it peaks and that's going to let you make that effect even stronger. And if you're looking for a slow shutter speed shot, study the patterns of the stuff that's moving, whether it's the water like in the tides or uh, grasses blowing in the wind. Look for those patterns and shoot to either capture that pattern without detail but maintain the pattern or sometimes blur the pattern so it's impossible to tell what you really are looking at and you've created a whole new world. But here's something important for you. Plan on putting one extreme shutter speed shot in your portfolio. I'm not going to give you an assignment this week because many of you have some serious catch-up to do. But that doesn't mean you're not going to be able to do one of these shots. I'm going to want you to put it in your portfolio. So go ahead, get caught up as best you can so we can move ahead next week with an entirely different type of subject. But think about these shots because you're going to end up producing one sooner or later. See you later.